Alright, hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new series that we're going to be doing on our channel. Uh, in Civ 6, we're going to be playing a normal game, and it, the whole point of the series is to either help you get introduced into the Civ 6 game, or if you've already been playing the game, and you just kind of want to have a, I don't know, a fun time playing it, and just have a chill time and want to recreate this you can uh but we are going to be playing with the secret societies mode turned on and we are going to be doing the game on uh prince difficulty and the whole reason why we're doing it on prince difficulty is because i'm not a, i'm i'm not the best player at this game i don't i can't play dd to save my life uh but i'm hoping that those of you watching this can re-emulate this if you would like and that find something else that could probably better your experience to do it. But odds are you're just coming out. Uh, we're going to be turning disaster intensity down to 1. This should help you kind of get introduced into this. Now the way I'm going to be playing, I'm not going to have game speed. There's going to be no turn limits. That means no score victory. And we're going to keep barbarians on. And we're going to be playing with abundant resources. And we are going to be playing on legendary start position. We are also going to be playing on standard map size. As well as the Ethiopian nation. Because we're going to kind of go through a religious type victory. But we're going to turn off religious victory. And I'm going to try. This will somewhat be a guide on how to play Ethiopia. But this is a fun nation to play as. And, you, you know, I hope that this can help out anyone. If you would like to comment down uh, below to help others out, I'm more than welcome to let y'all do that. Just no, you know, like no calling somebody out or anything like that, please. So yeah, uh, but the whole point of this episode is to get you started with founding your city as well as what tech to go for straight away. But with Ethiopia, I'm probably going to grab astrology first because you receive science and culture equal to 15% of your faith output. So if we get that as well as a tribal village to get the, um, the Void Singers, I believe it's the Secret Society Void Singers, uh, you get a special kind of monument that gives you faith and culture. So you get that pumping out as well as a holy site. You get a bunch of, uh... Oh, hey, look, we already started out with, the uh, Hermetic Order. It's not who we want, though. Because we spawned right next to a World Wonder. Are we on top of it? Okay, we're on top of a hill. And so, if I remember correctly, get, like, bonus faith. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have your city on a hill, you get 15% of the faith goes towards science and culture. And so we're going to found our city. And... Our warrior, we're going to move to this hill because it reveals two tiles out. Compared to if I went to here, it would only reveal a tile. So this way we know there's a river down here. We also know there are uh, pearls out here as well. And we're going to go for astrology. And since, well, we have a stone resource here. We could build Stonehenge, but we'd have to either get rid of the cattle or the olives. And I would not recommend doing that. You always want to start off building a scout as your first uh, production. Because it helps you get a map. Um, helps you reveal the map more to you. And also, we want the Void Singer. So we're going to get Pingala first to get increased science and culture in the beginning as well. Because you get uh, two promotions on him in the very beginning. That are called... Uh, researcher and connoisseur, which give you plus one culture uh, for each citizen and plus one science for each uh, citizen, respectively. So that works. And again, we're going to go to the sale tile. We'll see the two tiles away from them, and we'll hit next turn. Now there is this uh, barbarian scout here. We do have to be a little bit uh, like keep an eye on it, essentially. And that's what you want to do if you always if you're playing with barbarians on. You want to keep an eye for scouts, and you want to make sure you're getting 
military units to help defend your uh, lands in the very early game because okay so the barbarian camps over here there's a tribal village we have to get but if the scout was to come over here and find me and go back to the camp it spawns in a bunch of horsemen and other military units to essentially kill you or at least make your life miserable now I personally if I just get on and just want to play the game just for fun I personally turn off barbarians because I just kind of want to sit here and you know listen to music I could be doing work for school I could be doing uh, I could just be talking to my friends on discord or something like that and so just to have something going on in the background like this actually helps out a lot with just you know having something to do while you're talking to people now we did just meet uh the kumar or the kumar uh somebody correct me if i'm saying that wrong please i would very much appreciate that also we had void singers now so we're going to appoint them and uh you get uh the tribe or uh the old god obelisk which this monument is a special monument in the sense that it gives you four faith on top of the one culture that you originally get with the uh, monument. So you're going to be getting four faith. Once you get Code of Laws, you can get God King, which gives you one, uh, one gold and one faith in your capital. Which helps out a whole lot for Ethiopia. Especially since our city's on the hill, we get 15% extra science and culture uh, generated because of us getting a bunch of faith. Now, I'm not good at math, so I can't tell you what 15% of 4 is, but I believe it's 1, or, cl or almost 1 extra science and culture return, which is massive in the early game. Because, see, look, we're getting basically 4 uh, science a turn over the Khmer, which means we could get a tech faster than them, and declare war on them, and kill them if we wanted to do that. Or we can just out science everyone to stay ahead of them if we don't want to go for a domination victory and go for a science victory instead. Which is actually kind of fun going for a science victory. Now all we can do with our uh, worker is work the rice because we don't have mining yet. Speaking of mining, I am going to research it. I also forgot to put this on online speed. If you would like to play the game in online speed, it's quicker than your standard speed by, I believe, a turn or a turn or two in terms of research and production, which online's made more for multiplayer to help you get through the game quicker. But if you just kind of want to chill out and get through the game or, you know, mess around with different strategies to win the game, then online mode would actually work for you. Now we are going to grab discipline for our military policy because plus five combat strength against barbarians really helps and it is better than the double experience for recon units. This is probably the worst card you can go for. Now if you're playing with no barbarians you have no choice but to choose a military policies so you have to do survey or else you're wasting your military policies. Um, but for economic policies I guess this really depends on which one you want to go. If you want to go for early production, urban planning will actually help you get plus one production in the early game to produce uh, granaries, the obelisk, military units, campuses, holy sites, whatever you want to produce. Or you can get God King, which is what we wanted to do because we wanted to get our faith out. So we could get a possible uh, pantheon and as well as getting more science and culture turn. And so now for our civics, we could go for early trade. We could also go for a uh, craftsmanship to get uh, extra production towards builders. Now I might want to go for a uh, foreign trade because if I'm not mistaken, okay, no, none of the city states actually want that. Sometimes your city states will give you a quest to send a trade route to them to help uh, get you a envoy to them to make it one step closer to being Suzerian over them. 
and so this is this is weird that I don't have one but I mean at the same time I still would suggest going with foreign trade because you'll get a trader you can build you can also do a joint war with someone you also get uh yeah you get plus two gold from all trade routes that means you can get early game gold pretty quickly and I got another builder. Okay, we have two builders that we've gotten from the tribal villages. Or uh, if you are uh, not new to Civ 6, you probably heard Goody Huts. Or if you are new, you'll probably hear me say Goody Huts or tribal villages. They're the same thing. They just give you goods, essentially. Now, I it, this guy's going to just be sitting in my lands doing nothing for a while. Because I'm still getting astrology, astrology, which we do need to find a spot to build the holy site. Now, if we can get our pantheon out pretty quick, there is one dealing with uh, forests and tundra tiles, as well as desert tiles. That give you plus one faith for every tundra tile next or uh, adjacent or on top of the holy site and vice versa for the desert. Now I have a feeling I might go for the tundra because this one tundra tile is three uh, tiles away from my capital making it to where there will be one, two, three, four, possibly five plus five bonus. It might just be plus four. Um, but we have to wait until we get the pantheon to see if uh, that one still exists. And we will continue telling our warrior to come back once our obelisk, our uh, the, sorry, our obelisk gets finished. We will go and start building the either the holy site or possibly get a, a slinger or another warrior to either go kill this barbarian encampment or at least defend our northern territory for right now. But we're going to continue exploring with our scout. And I forgot to mention this earlier. Your scout has three movement compared to your warrior. That only has two movement. Now with Civ 6. Uh, a tile that has no woods, no hills, nothing on it. Is just a tundra tile, plains tile, or grassland tile. It only takes one movement to go over that tile. So with three movement. Our scout can go from this deer all the way over to the river. And they can go into a radius of three tiles this far. Now to go over a hill or through the woods, you have to take two movement out of the three to go through it. And to also cross a river takes two movement as well. Now we have no suitable location technically for a holy site yet. But... We can wait, we can either buy our way out to this tundra tile, which we are going to do that, but we will produce a, oh hey look, we can put Stonehenge up here instead. Yeah, for Stonehenge to be built, it has to be on flat land next to stone. It has to be next to stone. So with that knowledge, we can put Stonehenge over here, save up to buy that tile, or or possibly uh, grow out to that tile. And we can put that there, giving a bonus towards the holy site, as well as found our our uh, religion. So instead, what we're, what we're going to be doing is building a warrior and going to the next turn. Now, we are working for mining. In order to put a quarry on the stone. And once we get the copper uh, resource. We can put a mine on there. Giving us extra production. It is essentially to help us go. And produce our units and buildings quicker. Now with the scout. We're going to use up all three movement to go here. Because if we go to the woods tile. We will see two tiles across. To uh, the east. As well as we'll be on the other side of the river to continue exploring out to the east. We also get to see Kumasi a little bit more 
by going through their territory if we ever if we uh, decide to do that. Now we are kind of following a barbarian scout, so we do need to be a little bit careful. But uh, uh, we have olives here, so it wouldn't be bad to go for irrigation. And we also have cattle, so I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab pottery first, and then we'll uh, get irrigation. And so uh, that'll do it for this episode. I hope this can help those of you just now getting into Civ 6 to help have a little bit of an understanding. Uh, and for those of you who have been playing Civ 6 for a while to hopefully get get a grasp of holy sites or an or, uh, early game mechanics that could help you if you're struggling in the early game. And then in the next episode, we will either be getting our Pantheon, uh which we should be getting our Pantheon next turn, or in the next episode, I should say. And we can look into getting the Tundra Tiles and the extra faith from those Tundra Tiles. So I can't wait to see you on the next episode. And so stay safe. It is a crazy world out there. Mm -hmm.